People on center court are being treated to a great display by the two-time defending champion, Martina Hingis, number two in the world. And Liz Smiley and I, we're down here at the bunker courtside level, and Martina Hingis has made about three or four unforced errors the whole match. Well, Osterloh's not a bad player. I mean, she's won the NCAAs, she, and her ground strokes are terrific. But right now, Martina Hingis is just outrageous. <laughs> well drop shots and, and any kind of shot imaginable Martina Hingis has hit. And we all know that she's very versatile, but just a few days ago in the finals of the Adidas International, we saw Martina Hingis against Lindsay Davenport basically be treated like a rag doll in the first six games of the match, down 1-5, and made a reasonable match out of the final, but Davenport won in straight sets. And now to see her with this kind of display, it makes you uh, wonder whether or not Hingis is going to be like Celis and have a hard time losing on this court. Well, I think obviously when you play against Lindsay Davenport, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, your reaction time is cut down, and Lindsay Davenport had tremendous power and could overpower Martina Hingis on a serve. So, you know, that's the difference between someone that's ranked outside the top 100 as compared to someone that's ranked number one in the world. And, and they're the kind of weapons that you need against Martina Hingis. You really need something that is going to hurt her. And unfortunately, you know, Ostelo doesn't have that. Well, Hingis' last service game, she actually lost the game. It's the only time that she's been broken in the match. Osterlo has held serve once, and that was in the fourth game of the match. So 6-1, first set to Hingis in 19 minutes. And now 4-1, 30-15, and two points to go on this ad side. You saw Martina Hingis attempt to serve and volley. And that's the kind of point Osterlo has to play in order to win as we look at the coaches for Lilia Osterloh. That was Lynn Raleigh and Olma Mumquist in the white cap. Both work for the United States Tennis Association and Lilia Osterloh is one of the most promising 20-year-olds in the United States. But having a tough time making the progress from top college player, top junior player into the pros. Game point for Hingis. Oh. Every shot in the book. 6 1, 4 1 for Hingis. Hingis leaves five games to win. Melanie Molitor, coach and mom of Martina Hingis, looks on to a 6-1, 5-1 lead, despite what I just said a minute ago. Oh. Steffi Groff starts things off for her campaign tonight. That's the women's match in the night session. Well, Martina Hingis hitting the approach and really not hustling in as well as she may have. She likes to hit that and then just sort of hover and see what her opponent does. But Osterlo coming out with a good pass. Hingis, one of four former number ones on the bottom of the women's draw. It's an extraordinary draw. 11 Australian Open titles represented. Oh. Got Hingis with two. You've got Sellis and Groff with four each, and Mary Pierce with one. I think the last time there were 11 titles in one half of the draw was when Margaret Court was playing in her last Australian Open. She won 11 all to herself. Pretty good volley here. 14, 15. She didn't get an, enough penetration on Ostelo, able to run it down. That volley there, coming up with a great cross court pass. Two game points. 
trying to hold serve for the second time in the match. I'll tell you what, Osterloh has not played a bad match. It's not just at all. Hingis is doing everything to perfection, and Osterloh does not have a big, fearful shot. Hingis has been pretty comfortable throughout, been able to play whatever shot she wants, whenever she wants. But Osterloh holds serve, and Martina Hingis will be serving for the win after this. Martina Hingis does not like to waste much time. It's another reason why she plays such quick matches, because she just takes six, seven, eight seconds between points, ready to go against Lilia Osterloh of the United States, serving for the match. Well, Peng, sometimes I feel like it takes, you know, the girls that aren't on centre court all the time, like Martina Hingis, it takes them a while to settle into the surroundings. And the way that Hingis came out playing, it also took you know, Oslo a while to, I think, adjust to the way that she was playing. But um, she feels like she's, I'm sure, working her way into the match, but, you know, it's nearing its conclusion. Yeah, it's not three out of five. <laughs> from Hingis. You can see the force of the Oslo return. Didn't matter though. Sitting down in this courtside bunker, you really get a good feel of the great depth and penetration that Martina Hingis gets on the ground strokes to bring up two match points. the worst shot of the day for Hingis. Took her eye off the ball. She does that about three times a year. Oh! An incredible display of tennis, all-court tennis from the two-time winner, Martina Hingis. Martina Hingis would look to build on this form because she so dearly wants to close the gap between about 400 point lead that Lindsay Davenport now has over her coveted number one ranking that Hingis had for 80 weeks. Martina Hingis, 6-1, 6-2, and let's go to court number one. 